Well, friends, there is not a day that goes by that I am not amazed. Certainly not shocked because I told you so. To all those who voted for Donald Trump, I told you so. That the grief and the tears of marginalized folks in this country, of people who fight for equality, of black and brown folks whose bodies are taken for granted, of black and brown blood that is spilled on the streets of America, we told you so. We knew before he stole the White House, and we knew on the day that it was announced that all would not be the same. James Cones prophetically speaks about this, about white supremacy and its power. He said, while white mob violence against African, he said in his book, The Cross and the Lynching Tree, that while mob white mob violence against African Americans was an obsession in the South. It is not limited to that region. White supremacy was and is an American reality. Whites lynched blacks in nearly every state, including New York, Minnesota, and California. For whatever blacks were present in a significant numbers, the threat of being lynched was also real. Blacks had to watch their step no matter where they were in America. A black man could be walking down the street minding his own business and his life could suddenly be changed by meeting a white man or a group of white men or boys who on a whim decided to have some fun with a Negro. And this could happen in Mississippi or New York, or Arkansas, or Illinois. By the 1890s, lynching fever gripped the South, spreading, spreading itself. As white communities made blacks their primary target and torture their focus, burning the black victim. Slowly for hours was the chief method of torture. Lynching became a white media spectacle in which prominent newspapers like the Atlanta Constitution announced to the public the place, date, and time of the expected hanging and burning of black bodies. For even as many as 10 to 20,000 men and women attended the event, it was a family affair, a ritual celebration of white supremacy where women and children were often given the first opportunity to torture black victims, burning black flesh and cutting off genitalia, fingers and toes and ears as souvenirs. Postcards, postcards were made from photographs taken of black victims with white lynchers and onlookers smiling as they struck a pose for the camera. They were sold for 10 to 25 cents to members of the crowd who then mailed them to relatives and friends often with a note saying something like this This is a barbecue we had last night What we've seen today of Donald Trump standing in the Trump Tower bearing his name bearing his legacy, bearing the strength of white supremacy in America was a lynching. Or maybe even a lynching preparation. Nonetheless, it was a lynching. So I caution us and I encourage all of us, people who are allies to black and brown folks, that we gotta work together that we got to march together that we have the shout that we have to shout justice 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 we have to shout for our children we have to shout for our ancestors 
We have to shout for a country, for the possibility of a country that could be a welcoming home to all again. What we've seen last Friday was a bunch of people who are fearful of equality and justice. What we've seen in the Trump in the Trump election is a bunch of voters, a bunch of Trump voters who are afraid of God's people. But I'm here to tell you that there is hope in unity and there is hope when a people shout out for justice. There is hope in those young people who are standing outside the Trump Tower shouting no fascism, no KKK, no USA. There is hope. They are the future. Black, brown, gay, straight, trans, everybody. Everybody, there is hope in those voices who are shouting out for justice. Many, I was talking with my cousin last Thursday about our family history. I grew up in a city called Youngstown, Ohio because my mother and my mother's mother brought their children to Youngstown after my mother's brother was murdered by a white police officer. He was lynched, hung up on a tree, and lynched. Lynched by white supremacy. And that was in the 1930s. It's now 2017. We see it trying to emerge, reemerge, or gain more strength. But I know that there are people of justice and of goodwill. Just as there is a Good Friday, there is a Resurrection Sunday. Just as we tarry for three nights and grieve and stand in pain, there's a Sunday morning coming, a resurrection day. White supremacy thinks that it has the last word, but it doesn't. And we're going to show it that it doesn't.